Hello and uh, welcome all of you once again. Let's continue with the next topic uh, from the unit number five. As all of you know, last time we have started with the uh, unit number five that is the related with the memory management and uh, related with the same. Uh, today we are discussing the next topic in that it is a various memory allocation strategy. And in that today we'll discuss about the uh, one of the main technique in memory allocation that is the contiguous memory allocation and uh, one technique in that contiguous memory allocation. Okay. So as the last time we have discussed what exactly is the memory management, what is the memory types of the memory, et cetera, et cetera. What is the need of uh, memory management that all the things last time we have discussed. So as you know, the memory management is one of the important functionality of the operating system and uh, which handles or manages the primary memory or our physical memory that is our random access memory by moving the process or data or instruction back and forward between the memory and the uh, between the main memory that is our RAM and between the hard disk. Okay. So how does the memory get managed by uh, continuously uh, exchanging the particular memory or uh, the continuous interaction between our uh, main memory and the uh, secondary memory as already last time we have discussed if there is a, a need of the particular data or instruction or the process to be get executed by the CPU, then that particular process has to be brought from the secondary memory into the primary memory. When that process get executed, that particular process has to be again shipped into the secondary memory, which is your uh, permanent storage. In this way, the primary, get, primary memory get managed. Okay. So as a part of the uh, main, uh, management of the primary memory, uh, there are the other different kind of activity get performed. As you know, the memory management function uh, keep the track of uh, status of each memory location means memory uh, as per the memory management functionality. Uh, this uh, particular function of operating system has to uh, keep the track of uh, how much memory is allocated, uh, which memory locations are allocated, which memory locations are free. So that particular functionality is done in the memory management. Also, it determines uh, how the memory is allocated among the different computing process means how the memories get allocated if there are more than uh, one processes want to uh, allocate the memory and uh, according to the priority, uh, the memory is allocated for such kind of process. Okay. So same thing I have written here, the, it determines how memory is allocated among the computing process, deciding which get the memory when they receive it and how much they are allowed to be allo how, how much memory they are allowed. Okay. So when the memory is allocated, uh, it determines which memory location will be get assigned. Okay, according to the uh, empty memory locations. Also memory management function keep track of uh, when memory will get free and which memory locations are alloc uh, unallocated. So updating the status of all these things that is done in the memory management function. Okay. So it also decide which, uh, which process will get the memory at what time. If there are the number of process are in the waiting queue then which particular process will get the memory at what time that work also uh, done by the uh, that track also being taken by the or kept by the memory management function of the operating system okay and uh, as already we have discussed it also keep the count of how much memory can be allocated to the process means suppose there is a one p1 process has come then how much memory will be allocated to that p1 process so count of that also being kept by the as a part of the memory management function so that everything related with the memory management last time we have discussed. Okay. Now today we have to discuss uh, which are the different strategies are available uh, using which the memory get allocated to the different process. Okay. So uh, memory allocation is nothing but the, uh, we can say the action of assigning the physical address spaces to the process. Uh, process in the sense the particular instruction and data. So memory allocation is nothing but the activity of assigning the some memory locations or physical memory as a uh, physical address spaces to the process. So process is nothing but the form with the help of the different instruction and data. So whenever some process comes uh, for the execution to the CPU, now that process has to be first uh, bring into the uh, main memory in the sense, then in that main memory, how the different uh, physical addresses will we get assigned to that process? that is nothing but the action of memory allocation okay 
so allocating the space within a memory to the certain process that is the simply concept of memory allocation so the modern computer system has an memory space as i last time i we have discussed the whole memory space is divided into the number of different blocks and each of that block is considered as a cell so same thing i have written here in modern computer the modern computer system has a memory space divided into the blocks of various size and these blocks are of various size okay so the operating system assign this memory block to the different process depending on the empty spaces depending on the empty memory spaces so memory allocation is nothing but the assigning this uh, whatever the pre memory spaces are there to the different instruction and data which is part of your process in short assigning the memory to the different process okay so this memory is assigned in the main memory segment depending on the demanded memory and empty memory slot present in the main memory so depending on what is the need of particular process the memory is get allocated within this uh, uh, within this particular uh, different blocks of the memory okay so uh, in order to process uh, for the process to be get executed that uh, particular process has to be put in the memory first that is the primary memory and uh, that is not so how it is being done it can be done with the help of the memory allocation strategy understood so uh, so assigning space to the process in the memory in short uh, whatever is the, the the summary of our discussion related with this slide is nothing but what assigning the space to the process in the memory is simply called as a memory allocation understood now in order to do this memory allocation there are the two important uh, memory allocation strategies are available for the operating system one in that is the uh, contiguous memory allocation and second strategy is the non contiguous memory allocation okay so in order to allocate the memory two important uh, memory allocation strategies are available first is the contiguous memory allocation contiguous in the sense in the continuous manner and non contiguous second allocation strategy okay that is not that is opposite to the contiguous means non continuous that is the non contiguous okay so again a contiguous memory allocation strategy is also divided into the two categories fixed partition scheme and the variable partition scheme as i shown you here also so today we are going to discuss about the uh, what is the contiguous memory allocation and in that contiguous memory allocation what is the fixed partition scheme okay so related is the variable partition scheme and some other part that we will discuss in the next lecture okay so uh as i said the memory allocation strategies are purely divided into two categories one of the that category is the contiguous memory allocation okay so what do you mean by the contiguous memory allocation so in contiguous memory allocation each process is contained in the single contiguous block of memory okay so in case of the contiguous memory allocation memory is divided into the several fixed size partition understood each partition contain the exactly one process okay when a partition is free process is selected from the input queue and loaded into it okay so the memory the free blocks of the memory are being referred as a holes for the cells that already i told you okay so the set of hole is searched to determine which holes are best to be allocated and which holes are empty okay so it allow to store the process only in the contiguous fashion okay so the entire process has to be stored as a single entity at one place inside the memory okay so the contiguous memory allocation is nothing but what memory get allocated to the certain process in continuous mode understood in the continuous mode there is a no uh, you will see in that example okay so i uh, one some important characteristic of the contiguous memory allocation is what each process is each process is allocated in the single block of the memory that is the first characteristic of a continuous memory allocation what each process will be contain or get each process will get exactly single contiguous block of the memory understood then second characteristic of the contiguous memory allocation what the particular memory is divided into the fixed size partition okay so this memory is a pre divided means before the memory allocation will start in case of the contiguous memory allocation the memory is divided into the fixed size partition and each partition contain exactly one process what each partition will contain exactly one process so these are the three important characteristic of the contiguous memory allocation okay so let's see the example for that suppose there are consider there are three process of size 
फाइव के बी टू के बी एंड थ्री के ओके एंड देर इज अ पर्टिकुलर मेमरी ऑफ टोटल साइज टेन के बी जस्ट एग्जाम्पल आई एम टेलिंग यू मेमरी ऑफ टोटल साइज इज हाउ मच टेन के बी सो इन केस ऑफ द कंटिन्यूस मेमरी एलोकेशन दिस पर्टिकुलर टेन के बी ऑफ होल मेमरी इज फर्स्ट डिवाइडेड इन टू द फिक्स साइज पार्टीशन मीन दिस इज अन पार्टीशन ऑफ साइज फाइव के बी दिस इज अ सेकंड पार्टीशन ऑफ साइज टू के बी this is a third partition of size 2 kb and this is the last partition of size 1 kb means this whole 10 kb of memory is pre divided into the fixed partition how many fixed partitions are there now four fixed partitions are there understood now there are the four holes or four blocks or four cells of the memory are there okay now this four blocks of the memory can be utilized by the four different process understood now consider as i said consider three process are there 5 kb 2 kb consider three process of size 5 kb second process of size 2 kb and third process of size 3 kb okay now 5 kb process will be get stored in this particular block of memory or the cell understood then this 2 kb will get stored in this this block of memory but now remaining particular process size is how much 3 kb but is there any partition whose size is 3 kb no this is the 2 kb this is a 1 kb but you can say this is this if you if you add this two partition it become 3 kb but the in case of the contiguous memory allocation you can add put the this particular process of the size 3 kb into the these two blocks of the memory because in case of the contiguous memory allocation what the characteristic says each partition contain exactly one process means this particular remaining 3 kb size of process can be contained within this particular part of the memory but it is already allocated to the 5 kb size process now what what is remaining these two blocks of the memory now these two blocks of the memory will remain unused because 3 kb size of the process cannot be put in this 2 kb because it is less than this 3 kb it cannot be put in the 1 kb because it is also less than the 3 kb understood so now you can see this particular two partitions of the block remain unused understood this two partitions of the block remains unused understood still the partitions are available blocks of the memory available this process cannot be get accommodated in this particular block of the memory understood so that is the one of the disadvantage of the continuous memory allocation that we are going to see in the further section of this particular concept okay so that is the concept of the continuous memory allocation is what if you want to allocate the memory for the process then it will be get allocated in the continuous fashion means if the 5 kb is process is there it can be put in this block of the 5 kb this 5 kb process cannot be put by dividing 5 kb into the 2 kb 2 kb and 1 kb in this three partitions it cannot be done in case of the contiguous memory allocation it is not possible in case of what contiguous memory allocation only one partition will contain the only one process that is the main characteristic of contiguous memory allocation you cannot break this process of 5 kb into the three parts and then you cannot allocate the memory to this three part in this way one part 2 kb another part 2 kb and another part 1 kb so if you want to allocate the memory using the continuous memory allocation it can be allocated in the continuous way only means only one partition will contain exactly one process understood so that is the continuous memory allocation as i said in continuous memory allocation each process is contained in the single contiguous block of memory so this 5 kb is a single continuous block of memory that is the reason this process of size 5 kb can be allocated here easily this 2, 2 kb is of the size this 2 kb uh, process uh, this uh, second process size the 2 kb it can be easily allocated in the second partition because second partition size is the 2 kb and it is a contiguous but the last one that is a 3 kb size now uh, size of the last process is the 3 kb how much remaining memory blocks are available one block is the 2 kb one block of is one another block is of 1 kb so 1 2 kb is not sufficient to allocate 3 kb process 1 kb is also not sufficient to allocate the 3 kb if you combine this then it will become the 3 kb but if you combine this it is it, you are combining the two partitions understood and that is not allowed in case of the contiguous memory allocation so that is the reason it is said in contiguous memory allocation 
each process is containing single contiguous block of memory even if the memory is allowed memory is available by combining the block it is not possible in case of the contiguous memory allocation to allocate the memory for certain processes okay so that is the reason these are the three important characteristic of contiguous memory allocation that you should keep in mind because we have to compare it with the non contiguous memory allocation so once again i i repeat in contiguous memory allocation each process is contained in the single contiguous block of memory memory is divided into the fixed several fixed partitions like here then each partition contain exactly one process understood and these free blocks of the memory is called as a holes okay so whenever process will require the particular memory then these particular uh, uh, free blocks or holes are search understood and then whichever hole or the block is available in that uh, the particular process uh, uh, get uh, uh, their memory okay so that is the reason here also last point i have mentioned that the entire process has to be stored as single entity at one place inside the memory so that is called as a contiguous memory allocation where each process will get stored into the exactly one partition of the memory where partitions are pre divided okay now contiguous memory allocation in contiguous memory allocation also we have to discuss one important concept that is the partition table okay so once the partitions are fixed are defined operating system has to keep track of which partitions are available uh, which partitions are allotted which partition are uh, free okay so the uh, uh, operating system has to keep track of all these things and operating system keep track of all these things using one important data structure that is called as a partition table so whenever the partitions are uh, done by the operating system whenever the memory is get divided into the different partitions okay different slot then in our uh, operating system also has to keep track of which partitions are allocated which are un unallocated or the free and this information is stored using the one important data structure that is called as a partition table so this is the sample partition table i have shown you here like starting address of partition here it is been shown okay starting address of partition in the sense that particular block of memory will start from which address okay size of each block size of each partition or size of each cell is shown here whether that partition is allocated or it is free or uh, allocated so whether the partition is allocated or free that state that particular record is kept in the status column okay so to keep track of uh, which blocks are available of the memory which blocks are uh, uh, allocated which are unallocated or which are allocated which are free to keep track of that the data structure utilized that is called as a partition table okay then uh, uh, as we are discussing about the contiguous memory allocation okay so the contiguous memory allocation also in case of as i told you contiguous memory allocation technique uh, is divided into the two important uh, categories which is nothing but first is a static partitioning which is also called as a fixed size partitioning or dynamic partitioning which is also called as a variable size partitioning okay so today we are going to discuss only about the uh, contiguous memory allocation in that already we have discussed the what is the concept of contiguous memory allocation and in that today we are going to discuss about the static partitioning or the fixed size partitioning okay now already you must be knowing static partitioning in the sense what once you uh, define the size of certain partition you cannot change it that is the reason this is referred as a static partitioning or the fixed size partitioning dynamic partitioning is nothing but what you can you can it is possible to change the size of the partitions whenever you require that is the reason it is referred as what variable size partition so you must have understood the difference between the static partitioning and the dynamic partitioning here the size of the partition is fixed you cannot change it once you define it here the size can can be changed understood so same thing i have written here static partitioning is a fixed size partitioning scheme okay means once you define the size of the partition or block or the cell of the memory it cannot be changed okay so in this technique main memory is pre divided main memory is pre divided into the fixed size partition pre divided in the sense before the memory allocation process start the memory is first divided into the fixed size partition okay the size of each partition is fixed and cannot be changed means as if you de declare the size of one particular partition as a 10 kb or 5 kb or 2 kb once it is declared it cannot be changed understood 
and each partition is allowed to store only one process each partition can store only the one process understood so this four important characteristic of static partition you should keep in mind first is what it is a fixed size partitioning scheme second memory is pre divided into the fixed size then third size of each partition is fixed and it cannot be changed and last each process can be stored only in the single each partition is allowed to store only the only single process okay so so this is nothing but the referred as a static partition scheme like uh, example of that i i have shown you here under fixed size partition scheme a memory of size 10 kb for example can be divided into the fixed size partition like this the 10 kb can be divided into the uh, in the pre divided uh, in the pre divided manner it can be divided into the 5 kb 2 kb 2 kb 1 kb so it can be divided into the different kind of uh, uh, partition and size but at the initial point only once you define the size it cannot be changed okay so these partitions are allocated to the process as they arrive whenever the process arrives these partitions are allocated to the process okay the partitions allocated to the arrive process depends on the algorithm follow okay now whenever the one process p1 comes okay now to this p1 whether this partition to be get allocated or this or this or this which one now in order to decide that there is a one algorithm is being followed okay you know to decide whether p1 should be allocated to this partition or this partition or this partition now we know to decide that some algorithm strategy has to be utilized the same thing is written here the partition allocated to the arrow process depends on the algorithm and that algorithm we have to see the next okay so in that case the algorithm which is being there that is called as a partition algorithm for the partition allocation okay so as we have discussed uh, the assigning memory blocks to the process is a very challenging task as the primary memory is needed to be divided on uh, divided so this our primary memory has to divide into different partitions okay and that primary memory contains the operating system it contains the different user process operating system process etc etc okay as you know the our primary memory is limited that is the reason assigning memory blocks to the process is a very challenging task okay primary memory as compared to the secondary memory is a limited and that is the reason it has to be handled carefully it has to be managed carefully and primary memory only not contain the user process the primary memory is always divided among the operating system our operating system also there in the primary memory whenever you start the computer also when you utilize or when you do some task on the computer that user process also need the primary memory and also the primary memory is needed by the various operating system process so that is the reason challenge the operating uh, the assigning the memory blocks or memory cells or memory partitions to the different uh, this particular task or the process is very challenging task okay so therefore the system operating system uses the different algorithms to allocate the memory from the main memory as i said if there are the p1 p2 p3 and p4 this process comes and this process want to want to utilize the memory then how the memory will be allocated to this p1 p2 p3 p4 understood now in order to decide how the memory will be allocated now there might be a multiple partitions of the memory available there might be a thousands of memory partitions are available but which partition to be allocated for the p1 which to be allocated for the p2 which to be allocated for the p3 so it is not like that randomly the this process will be put into this memory allo, uh, memory blocks so in order to decide which partitions will be allocated to the particular process there is a one particular algorithm is utilized here it is mentioned therefore the system uses different algorithm to allocate the memory from the main memory segment okay and this algorithm which are being utilized to allocate the memory for different process is known as the memory partitioning algorithm that is called as was memory partitioning algorithm the algorithm which is utilized for what the algorithm which is utilized for allocating the memory to the different process that algorithm is called as what memory partitioning algorithm okay and in case of the memory partition algorithm there are the three algorithm related with that okay and that three algorithm we are going to discuss in that first is the first fit algorithm then best fit algorithm and third worst fit algorithm so as you can see here algorithm for partition allocation for the process being divided into three part first fit 
best fit and the worst fit algorithms are there okay so let's see the algorithm one by one okay now let's see the first algorithm in case of the contiguous memory allocation as i said it is divided into the two categories static partitioning and the dynamic partitioning in that we are discussing about the static partitioning and in the static partitioning uh, the algorithms which are being utilized to allocate the memory for the process that is also divided into the three categories in that first category is what first fit algorithm now let's just read the theoretical point and then we use the example to understand this better way okay so in case of first fit partition algorithm okay first fit partition algorithm you can see here in the first fit the partition is allocated which is the first sufficient block from the top of the main memory it scan the memory from beginning and chooses the first available block that is the large enough thus it allocate the first hole that is large enough means in case of the first fit part first fit algorithm how the partition is allocated to the process the partition is allocated to the process which is first sufficient block which is what here i have mentioned in the first fit the partition is allocated which is the first sufficient block from the top of the main memory so operating system scan the memory from the beginning and then it do what it choose the first available block first sufficient available block first available available block that is the large enough to hold the particular process and then that block is allocated to that particular process okay now why that is the reason it is called as a first fit algorithm means let's see in the example suppose there are the four process p1 p2 p3 p4 each process of the size is given 212 417 112 and the four process and the particular block of memory is given here which is having the size of 1700k 1700k block of memory is there and this block of memory is a pre divided into this partition one is the 100k another is another is a 500k another is the 200k and 300k and last one is the 600k so this 1700k is divided into the these uh, five partitions with the different size okay now we have to allocate the memory for the p1 which size is how much 212k 212k okay now according to the first fit algorithm the operating system search this block of memory which is pre divided and by searching this it will see the first pa the particular partition the first part first particular partition which is large enough to hold the 212k process now can we put the 212k process in the first partition no first partition size is how much 100k you cannot put that in uh, you cannot put the your p1 process into this in in this particular first partition because its size is 100k our process size is a 212k okay then which is next then second partition is size 500k your process size is how much 212k so in this block of memory this second partition is the first large partition which is having the size where you can put the p1 process that is the reason here mention partition number 2 of the size 500k is assigned to the p1 which is size 212k it is the first partition that can accommodate the p1 understood that is the reason here it is mentioned in the first feed the partition allocated which is the first sufficient block now this first block is not the sufficient block to hold the p1 p this particular second partition is the sufficient block to hold the p1 that is the reason the p1 will be get allocated in the this second partition and why it is a called as a first feed that you must have understood here we choose the which partition the first partition first in the sense not this first of the uh, this particular uh, uh, memory not the first of this mem uh, uh, not the first partition of this memory but the first partition but that first partition should be sufficient to hold your process that first partition should be large enough that that part, that particular partition we refer as a first understood so that is the reason here our process size is 212k now 
this is the first partition but it is not large enough we want the first partition that should be the large enough to hold your process so this is the so this is the first partition which is large enough to hold your process understood that is the reason process number here process number uh, process number 1 Uh, sorry process number partition number 2 of size 500k is assigned to the p1 of the size 212k it is the first partition that can accommodate the p1 understood that is the reason here you can see you are putting the p1 in this second partition then partition number 5 of size 600k now our partition our process p2 is having the size 417 so can we put the 417 in this first partition no in the p1 already you have put can we put the 417 in the p3 no can we put the 417 in the p4 no can we put the 417 in the p5 yes in the partition number 5 you can put your process of size 417 that is the reason partition number 5 of size 600k is assigned to the p2 where the size of the process is 417 it is the first empty partition that can be accommodated to the p2 so that is the reason we choose the this partition p5 for our p2 process understood then p3 of the size size what is the size of p3 112k now can we allocate the 112k in this first partition no in the second no can it be allocated in the p3 yes p3 is the first partition large enough to hold the p3 understood so that is the reason here p3 is assigned to the partition p3 is assigned to the partition number 3 understood so here you can see the p3 so p3 we have allocated then p1 and the p2 understood now you might get the question this p1 size is a 212k understood so why we have not allocated the partition number why we have not allocated the partition number uh partition number this 4 to the 212k but that is not possible according to the first fit what is the first fit is saying allocate the which partition which is the first and which is the large enough so partition 2 comes before the partition 4 that is the reason it is the first fit that is the reason it is the first partition which is the large enough to hold the process so that is according to the first fit you have to choose the which partition the first partition which is the large enough understood not the first meaning of the first here is not like the initial partition of your memory blocks first in the sense the first which is a large enough to hold your process accordingly you can uh, you can now what is the last process p4 its size is how much 4 to 6k now can we hold the 4 to 6k in the partition one no can we hold the 4 to 6k process in the partition two no it is already allocated can it be put in the partition 3 no can it be put in the partition 4 no because it size 300k we want the 4 to 6k can we put in the partition 5 no because it is already allocated but you can see so that is the reason you can see p4 cannot be get executed because no memory blocks are available understood now but if you see the partition number 2 where we are allocated the 212k process 212k size process there is a unused memory is 288 in a partition 3 there is a unused memory that is the 88 in the particular next block the unused memory in case of the partition 5 uh, is 183 understood so if you do the calculation of all these if you do the calculation of all these there are the blocks of the memory available means if you do the calculation of all these you will get you will get to know that the particular memory available is 559 memory is available because here p1 size is 212k means only the 212k will get utilized remaining is 288 is remain unused in case of partition 3 also only 88k is utilized only uh, sorry only 417 is utilized what is the unused 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 memory here in case of the partition 3 is uh, more than the 88k understood so same is the case same is the case 
in case of the partition number 5 also 183 is unused memory but this unused memory cannot be utilized because according to the contiguous memory allocation you cannot you 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 can put only one process within a only one partition understood so this particular unused memory this particular unused memory get wasted understood and if you calculate this wasted memory it is coming around 559 this wasted memory is coming around how much 559 okay and this particular wasted memory because of the characteristic of contiguous memory allocation is available what is the characteristic of contiguous memory allocation the contiguous memory allocation strategy says you can put only one process within one partition now even if the partition size is more and process size is less the remaining size remaining space remain unused wasted and that particular concept is called as a internal fragmentation that is called as what internal fragmentation that is the one of the disadvantage of contiguous memory allocation that is called as what that is called as what internal fragmentation what is the internal fragmentation internal fragmentation says even certain process allocated within particular partition that unused space within that partition cannot be get utilized or we can say if there is a particular process size is less than the size of the partition what when the size of the process is less than the size of the partition that unused space or unused memory is called as a internal fragmentation that is called as was internal fragmentation okay another disadvantage related to the contiguous memory allocation here is what external fragmentation that is also occurring here what external fragmentation now how the external fragmentation is occurring here okay see here our this 100k size block is also available okay and 300k size block is also available so this space is available here okay 100k and the 300k understood so if you combine these it is become 400k it is become 400k understood and if you combine if you combine these unused space then we can easily have we can easily have 4 to 6k we can easily have 4 to 6k if you combine this 300k this 100k and this unused space we can easily have the 4 to 6k but that is not uh, that is not allowed in case of the contiguous memory allocation or that is not allow, uh, allowed in case of the contiguous memory allocation and that is called as the external fragmentation means what even if the particular blocks of the memory are available the blocks of the memory are available but if they are not contiguous you cannot put your process within that block of memory that is called as the external fragmentation okay related to the internal fragmentation and external fragmentation in detail in the next lecture also we will study understood here you just keep in mind the particular strategy under the static partitioning and how much memory is getting wasted so you can calculate here the memory utilization also so memory utilization is calculated like this memory utilized divided by the total memory so memory utilized by the process p1 p2 p3 are like this 212k 417 112k and divided by total memory 1700k so you you can get here the memory utilization as a 0.436 understood so keep in mind here memory wasted in case of the first feed method 559 we have to compare it when you compare these strategies first feed best feed and the worst feed. okay let's see the next uh, algorithm strategy in case of the static partitioning which we utilize to allocate uh, memory for the different processes so second strategy is the best fit algorithm what best fit algorithm the same example we utilize here okay so what is the best fit algorithm is saying allocate the process to the partition which is the first smallest sufficient partition among the free available partition what is the best fit is saying allocate the process to the partition which is the first smallest sufficient what concentrate on this particular states sentence what see here first smallest sufficient partition among the free available partition okay 
so our operating system searches the whole uh, list of holes or whole memory partitions okay which are available and which partition get chosen according to the best fit the first smallest sufficient partition what first smallest sufficient partition let's see here now same example we are utilizing okay now we have the p1 size of 212k now p1 will be get allocated to the which partition now which is the which partition we have to choose first smallest sufficient now p1 size is 212k can you hold the p1 in the partition one no its size is less can we put it into the p2 yes we can put it in the p2 but size of the partition size of uh, can we put the p2 into the partition number can we put the p1 is it possible to put the p1 into the partition 2 our p1 size is 212k partition 2 size is 500k it is possible but it is not the first smallest sufficient first smallest sufficient in the sense if you put the p1 within a partition 2 how much memory is getting wasted there the amount of memory getting wasted there is around 288 around 288k that is the reason it is not the first smallest sufficient so can we put the p1 into the p into the partition 3 no its size is a 200k it is not possible can we put the p1 into the partition 4 yes we can put because how much memory is getting wasted here only 88 but if you put the p1 into the partition 2 how much memory is getting wasted 288 that is the reason here the partition 4 is the first it is the first small and sufficient partition that is the reason you can put p1 into the partition 4 understood so that is the best fit that is it is called as a best fit understood that is the reason it is mentioned partition number 4 of the size 300k is allocated to the p1 which size is a 212k that it is the smallest free partition that can be accommodated the that can accommodate the p1 so that is the reason p1 get accommodated into the partition 4 similarly partition number 2 of the size 500k is allocated to the p2 of size 412k 417k it is the smallest free partition that can accommodate p2 according to the best fit okay similarly partition number 3 is allocated to the p3 partition number 3 is allocated to the p3 because partition number 3 size is 112k it can be easily accommodated to the partition number 3 and partition number 5 is allocated to the p4 here you can see so that is the best fit algorithm you can see now you will come we will compare it with the first fit algorithm also okay now if you calculate the memory utilization here you can calculate the memory utilization here like this in the similar formula so memory utilization is 0.486 what was the memory utilization as in case of the first fit memory utilization in case of the first fit is a 0.436 so you can compare first fit and the best fit here definitely you can see the memory utilization is more in case of the best fit as well as wasted memory in case of the best fit is also less as compared with the 559 which is there in case of the first fit that is the reason best fit is better than the first fit algorithm okay i hope you have must have understood the best fit algorithm using which we can choose the particular partition for the particular process within a memory so here allocate the process to the partition which is the first smallest sufficient partition among the free available partitions so here the operating system search the entire list of holes or the blocks or the partition to find the smallest hole whose size is greater than or equal to the size of the process here you can see the wasted is less as compared with the first fit that is it is a that is the reason it is a better than the previous first fit strategy okay now let's see uh, so here does the internal fragmentation problem is coming here okay does the internal fragmentation problem is coming here yes here also the wasted space is there understood so there also internal fragmentation problem problem comes here okay now let's see the last uh, uh, algorithm in case of the static partitioning so that is the worst fit what worst fit let's see what it is say allocate the process to the partition which is the largest now see here you have to concentrate on this word which is the largest sufficient among the freely available partition 
so allocate the process to the partition which partition which is the largest sufficient among the freely available partition okay let's apply algorithm now we can see can we allocate the p1 within a partition 1 no can we allocate the p1 within a partition number 2 no it is possible but it is not the largest enough which is the largest enough out of these this is the largest enough that is the reason p1 is allocated within a partition 5 that is the worst fit algorithm seen allocate the process within a largest sufficient among the freely available partitions so this is that is the reason p1 is allocated to the partition 5 so here it is being said the largest partition number 5 of the size 600k is allocated to the p1 then p2 the size is a 417 so that is the reason assigned to the partition number 2 because partition number 2 is the largest free partition and it can be accommodate the p2 p3 112 k size assigned to the partition number 4 as it is the largest free remaining partition now p4 you can see the p4 size is how much 426k p4 size is how much 426k now it cannot be executed because there is a no free partition that can accommodate the p4 because there is a no free partition where you can accommodate the this particular p4 there is a unused space available unused space available which is having the size more than the 4 to 6 but that unused space is not the contiguous or that is not the contiguous that is come under the category of external fragmentation that is come under the category of external fragmentation so here also internal fragmentation occurs as well as the external fragmentation occurs what is the internal fragmentation i told you internal fragmentation is nothing but what when size of the process is less than the size of the partition so here internal fragmentation occur here also it is occurring here also it is occurring that is called as internal fragmentation and what is the external fragmentation external fragmentation is what in particular particular memory block uh, in the particular memory if you combine the unused memory and its size is more than the size required for the particular remaining process what if you combine this unused space now what is this unused space it's the 659 size and it is it is it is greater than the size of the process p4 which is a 4 to 6 but even that you cannot allocate the particular this particular available unused space to this p4 process because this is not the contiguous that is called as a external fragmentation that is called as what external fragmentation external fragmentation is what if you combine the total unused space if it is more than the memory which is required for the remaining process but still you cannot allocate that memory because of the contiguous memory allocation property that is called as a external fragmentation okay this part we will see in the next lecture also internal fragmentation external fragmentation with example okay so here you can see the you can calculate the memory utilization also this memory utilization is same as a first fit okay but it is a less than the best fit so you can see the wasted space also that is this wasted space is more in case of the first fit also and in case of the best fit also that is the reason this is called as a worst fit algorithm okay so these are the three algorithm uh, which can be utilized by operating system when the operating system has to decide which partition to be allocated for the which different particular process okay so different process when different process comes for the memory uh, when the different process uh, require the memory okay then that memory get allocated to the different process with the help of this three different strategies as a part of the contiguous memory allocation like first fit best fit and the worst fit okay so i hope all of you understood this strategy Uh, related with that now related now and uh, you must understand the static partitioning also now related to the contiguous memory allocation remaining part is there that is the uh, variable size partitioning and two important uh, uh, concept also we have to see uh, that is the internal fragmentation and external fragmentation that we are going to discuss in the next lecture okay thank you all of you if you have any doubt please comment in the comment section